Welcome and thank you for joining me. This is Laurie of Laurie's Heirloom Sewing. Today we're going to kind of work on some of the uh, pieces that we didn't finish yesterday in our Simplicity 8532. I, um, today is March 31st of 2020 and we're all in this current timeline in the year 2020 kind of going crazy for various reasons. Um, so I've been sketching and drawing almost every day. Here are these two. I've got a few over here somewhere. And now I'm going to start working on my sewing. We'll see how far I get today. I'm trying not, I don't want to get burned out on crafting. I'm worried that throughout the process we may have another month of, um, what we're having to go through nationally or even statewide. You know, it may get drilled down to certain areas. Um, it is global, so who knows. Um, anyway, so I don't want to get burned out on my on my crafts and I'm trying not to like, like super load certain crafts into a whole bunch of days right here at the uh, beginning, or I guess I should say kind of the the middle of this situation. Um, so I'm adding a few things in to just keep my myself personally from getting burned out on just doing one thing over and over and over and over and over again. So that's why I didn't jump right into sewing this morning, even though that's really kind of what I wanted to do. All right, so yesterday we cut out the sewing machine cover and, and the mat. It is a dual purpose um, item. And a couple of things I wanna point out about the mat and sewing machine cover. This we cut out yesterday for our trim around the edges. And I think instead of doing the bias trim this isn't bias. If you watch the video from yesterday when we cut all of this out, um, I just cut it out on the straight grain because I didn't want to use up all that fabric. When you cut fabric at a 45 degree angle on the fabric, you end up using up a whole lot and I just didn't want to do that. But I think instead I may just trim across the top part of the pocket like they show right here. And I'm going to do a flanged edge around the outer portion um, even though that isn't what the pattern calls for and if that's what I choose to do then I will only need one of the of these pieces per um, flanged edge and really all that is is you just fold this in half and you can baste it after you've gotten it folded, you fold it wrong sides together. Should that be what you choose to do, if you're going to do this along with me. And then we're going to put it on the inside of the um, project with the raw edges together. And then we're going to stitch them right sides together and this will just fold out and then it's just kind of um, a flanged edge that goes all the way around and I like the way it looks I think it will be um, a nice addition you could even do a, you could ruffle this you could do the same thing fold it wrong sides together baste all the way down the long edge twice and then pull the thread and it will gather this up and make kind of a little ruffly edge and you could have a ruffled edge going all the way around. But I think I'm just going to let mine be a, a flat edge. Um, if it's going to be near my sewing machine, I don't want ruffles kind of getting in the way, you know, grabbing onto things, causing problems. I think I'll just do a flat edge and it will help pull out the entire project as well and um, it won't get in the way. Okay, so the second thing um, I'm going to work on today is the scissors case, which is right here. And it's I'm gonna choose from one of these fabrics. I'm kinda leaning toward this one, 
but I also liked this one. I will not be using a, um, a piece of rickrack. They show rickrack. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right across the front right there. And I just sort of feel like, um, eh, I'm not really big into rickrack and I don't think it needs it. So some of the sewing that I will be doing will require some modification. Some will be exactly the way they describe it in the pattern instructions. And, um, you know, some will be, uh, like I said, just me figuring it out. Okay, so I won't be using these. And then I'm still trying to decide. I guess it's going to depend on how much I have. You have to cut one of fabric, one of contrast fabric. I'll need to see what that. That's probably for the inside lining. Um, and I think I will just have this and the contrast the same, but I do want to look in my instructions and see why I need a contrast fabric. Oh, okay. Scissors case. All right, so apply your fleece. Oh, that's right, you need a, a piece of fleece as well. Apply fleece to one scissors case section, and that's piece number 12, right here. And then on the outside, pin the rickrack around the upper edge, so that would be across here and around here, not down this side or the bottom. With right sides together, stitch the case sections together leaving an opening. Turn the case right side out, press, pressing under the open edges which would be on that side. Hmm, top stitch through and then fold it. So it will be very interesting to figure this thing out. Okay. I still have no idea. Alright, so this goes... I assume this goes to the back. That makes the most sense. And this folds across. I'm glad I'm doing this with paper and not my fabric. Okay. Hmm. Okay, they're kind of showing it. Ah, they are showing it backwards. Interesting. Okay, so it should look like this when you are done, and this piece right here would hold, um, say, some 8-inch uh, dressmaking shears. This would hold a smaller set, and this would hold a smaller set. So say something this size would fit in here, something this size would fit in here, and... Oh, if I can reach it. <laughs> Something this size would fit in here by the time you're all done. But I'm going to point out that I folded this over here is the right side of this. Over here is the wrong side. And in the pattern, 
instructions, it is showing it the opposite direction. It's showing it folded this way with the right side facing, and it's not. It's folded with the right side facing away from you. So that's something to be aware of. Um, I'm going to make a note on my pattern so I don't forget that. In. So wrong side facing me. I'm just going to put correct to wrong side facing me. And that way I'll know that, that the pattern instructions show it the opposite way. Okay, so now I must cut this out. I guess if you wanted the, the contrast of the fold, um, in other words, when you fold it, it's going to have different fabric showing. I kind of don't want that. So I'm just going to go ahead and have one solid piece of fabric for both sides. That is my plan. I'm going to use my paper or pattern weights to hold it down. I love these. They're just amazing. They're so fun, so quick, so easy. And they work beautifully. What I'm doing is lining it up along the cut edge of the bottom. And as much of the let's see if that's showing up there. I think so. Yeah. So this is the the edge of the pattern and I will just start cutting here where it, it angles in and then cut down. I'm going to use my rotary cutter and then I don't have to cut the bottom because that's already been done for me. I have to go very slowly. A lot of people don't like to do this. I don't have an issue with it. My rotary cutter is extremely dull And a dull rotary cutter can be very dangerous, so just do as I say and get a sharp blade. Don't do as I am doing. We'll just leave it at that. And I'm just kind of gently pulling the cut fabric away so I can see if I'm, I don't want to move this. doesn't work very well for me. I happen to like the sound of fabric being cut. I wish this was a uh, made for left-handed people. Okay. There's a little bit there. I honestly don't know what that noise is. Really nobody is supposed to be out. So I don't know. <laughs> Sounds kind of like somebody is out riding around in their car. Okay, so we should have two pieces of fabric, and we do. I will be pressing this, obviously. But I'm going to go ahead, and on the wrong side of the fabric, I'm going to mark these lines. I want to know 
where I'm going to be folding. And I don't know which one of these two pieces of fabric will be the correct piece of fabric for the, what I'm going to be looking at when I'm folding it. This is me sharpening my pencil. And yes, this is just a plain, oh, actually, this is a green, is this green? My eyes are all, no, it's just a regular pencil, okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just draw a line, and I'm doing this on, like I said, the wrong side of my fabric. And once I get these just kind of sketched in in the top and the bottom area, I will take my six inch ruler again and connect the lines. I don't understand what, actually I'm just gonna use piece of paper. I don't know what happened to my um, my long ruler. It's quite odd that I have not been able to find it. So I'm just lining up the edge of the piece of paper with the top line that I made, the center line that I made, And I'm connecting them all at the base. Just like the pattern shows it. Okay, and then on to the one at the very, very bottom. So you can see. I think you can see. I'll try to do this one. Um, In side of the camera. Okay, this is backwards, so I'll have to flip this over like that. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to draw a dot down here at the very bottom where all three lines meet up. And then I'm going to come up here and draw just underneath, I'm just going up underneath the pattern with my pencil and drawing just a short, quick line that matches up with the pattern line. Okay, and then I'm going to take my ruler, or in this, in my case, a piece of paper. This is cardstock. I'm going to meet that line, that dot that I drew right there. with that line up there and I'm going to do the same thing. I've got this cardstock on the dot down here and the line up there. And again, there's a line right there that is from the pattern and there's the dot down at the bottom corner. Okay. So both pieces are marked with pencil so I know when I iron it this isn't going to erase like a heat erase pen or pencil would do. And because it's a craft it's not a garment. It won't be worn by someone with these lines would be you know, ah why did you do that? So I'm not too concerned um, I doubt they're going to show. I can't see them on the correct side. Um, I might need to make myself some little marks when I complete this project 
to help me figure out what goes where. I kind of want to see. Now I remember it did say it was backwards. So my lines are here. Okay, that goes on that side. So this one folds across to meet over here. Uh-huh. This line meets here. And then this one is going to have to fold all the way back so that we end up with this. So the bigger scissors go in the back, the medium go in the middle, and the smaller scissors will go here. Okay, all right. And I believe we just stitch, 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 leave an opening on this side, flip it through, press, and then we can adorn it however we choose to do. Um, that, that should be relatively easy. And then this is my leftover fabric from that project. You know, and if I wanted to, um, I could also put some type of pretty trim along the, um, you know, this edge right here, this, this um, bumpy edge right there, and then come back and do... Yeah, that stops right there. And maybe even have a piece of trim along this edge and this edge, should I decide. But I don't think I'm going to. I kind of like the idea of it being a clean finish. Okay, and I don't need the pattern anymore. I don't also, I don't think I'm going to use fleece. I think, again, like I said yesterday, for this I'm just going to use some iron-on stabilizer of some sort. I don't really feel like it needs um, that poofiness to get in the way. Okay. We need to move these guys out of the way. All right, and I think, um, again, I think that's all for today. Tomorrow I will begin sewing. Um, I don't want to burn myself out. I know I've been watching a lot of videos um, of other people going through the exact same thing, just in different parts of the U.S. or even different parts of the world, and we're all kind of experiencing that same burnout. So rather than do that, I'm going to choose other things to um, to fill my time. Um, I did want to suggest that if you are feeling the same way, you might try um, some gardening if you have an uh, an opportunity, you know, to go in into your own space, like out in your backyard if you have a backyard. Um, if you don't have the option to do gardening, you might try baking. Um, I know that cleaning something up isn't really um, like on the high uh, high of high priority list, but you know, one kitchen cabinet, if you just cleaned out your spices, maybe, um, or cleaned out a storage closet in your house, like a linen closet just choose two shelves and say, okay, on Monday, I'm gonna clean out these two shelves and I'm not gonna do any more than that. Or I'm gonna clean out from under this bed or um, underneath that sink in the, this bathroom. Um, it really will help you to refocus. Um, journaling can help, drawing can help. None of the things that you're doing need to be for someone else's eyes. So if you're not comfortable drawing for anybody else, then don't draw for somebody else. I know how painful it can be to create something and have someone criticize it. Um, it's 
truly not worth that um, that feeling. So um, if you don't want to show what you've created with anyone, then don't show what you've created with anyone. Just allow it to be your own personal and private creation. And um, you can either keep it, save it, destroy it, burn it, send it, you know, off into the world somewhere else. Um, but at least it has, you know, it will give you the opportunity to do something besides sit and chew your fingernails and fret. Um, if you have a book to read, read a book. If, um, if you have a friend that you can talk to on the phone, then talk to a friend. But don't just sit and be idle. Um, there's really no good of that. And nothing good will come of it. So try doing some things that maybe you've not done before. Um, bake bread if you've never baked bread. Give it a go. You know, what What have you got to lose? Um, and then if it's not edible, maybe you could feed it to the birds. You know. But try your best. Um, I was watching a video today where a gentleman was discussing plants that grow outside um, using their Latin names. I spent like, I'm thinking maybe 20, 30 minutes just pausing and trying to repronounce the Latin names and then listening to him again and then pausing and trying to pronounce. And he was breaking down how this word became that word. It was fascinating. Honestly, I don't, know how I got on the topic. Um, oh yeah, I do. Yes, I do. My puppy stepped in wood nettles yesterday. There, It is a plant that grows in the Pacific Northwest along creek beds and underneath the, um, the canopy of all of the pine trees that typically grow in this area. It, it's a shade-loving plant. It emerges in early spring and it is a, a relative of stinging nettle, but um, stinging nettle prefers to grow in the open areas, um, also near creeks, but less under a um, tree canopy. So um, anyway, he, he stepped on wood nettles and was absolutely out of his mind with... Um, stinging and itching and burning and all of the things that happen when you step in or get near or brush up against the nettle family. Um, but anyway, so he was describing this and showing what it looks like and talking about the, um, the benefits, the pros and cons of the plant, what to look for, uh, and then he started talking about other plants um, and was using their Latin names. And I got really interested in the origin of those words. So that, you know, that probably took about an hour and 45 minutes out of a long sitting around the house day. So it is something to think about. Um, you know, and if it is current times when you're watching the video, um, go ahead and like and subscribe if you wish. Drop me a comment. Um, if you have any questions about baking or sewing or um, painting or drawing or um, basically almost any craft. You know, I don't do um, bead work except in relation to heirloom sewing where it would go like with smocked fabric if you were if you had pleated fabric and smocked it where and how would you add beads um, but heirloom sewing um, you know any of those kinds of things if you have questions I'm happy to help and um, let's just kind of keep each other uplifted during this difficult time and again, you can find me at Laurie's Heirloom Sewing on Facebook. And that's L-A-U-R-I-E apostrophe S Heirloom Sewing page on Facebook. 
And then I also have Instagram at Laurie Ann Eggleston. Um, and you can find me there. I occasionally post pictures of what I'm working on. Um, but anyway, stay safe. And um, I will see you next time. Thank you.